although many clients have a CRM that is integrated with Eloqua, we do have a number of clients that either don't have a CRM system at all, or for whatever reason have chosen not to integrate Eloqua with their existing CRM. And so not only do those marketers need to get data in, which they can very easily do with an import, they also need to be able to push leads and contacts for follow-up over to the sales teams. And so there's a very simple way that this can be done in Eloqua by leveraging the Form Submit Cloud app. So I wanna walk you through an example of how that works. So first we're gonna navigate into the settings area. So there are two key scenarios that we can leverage. Either you have a single point of contact in sales, so either that's someone that handles the routing manually or an email address that all of the salespeople have access to and can then pick up the leads. In that scenario, you can ignore the first part of what I'm gonna show you with the field and pick list. However, if you do have salespeople that are assigned to contacts either individually or based on region or country or business unit, et cetera, we'll have to complete these first couple of steps to make sure that our form will work. So the first thing is we need a field that, tell us, that tells us who the salesperson is. And so I'm working in the Tegrita instance, and in our instance, we actually have a field called salesperson, and you can see that salesperson uses a pick list called account manager in which case we store the actual full name of the person that owns the account. I'll navigate get again over to the settings and we'll look at the manage pick list. Here you'll see I have this account lead with email address pick list that also aligns to the account manager pick list, but in this pick list, we have the email address set as the option value. So here we'll see the name, which is the full name that will be stored in the salesperson field and the email address that should be sent for the notifications. Okay, so now that we have those two in place, we can go over and take a look at the form. So I'm gonna go under assets and forms. And here I have an example sales notification. I've put some of the fields in here uh, for simplicity's sake. And so at the top, you see I've got some basic contact information. This is information that will already be populated in Eloqua and will be passed through the notification over to the salesperson so that sales knows exactly who they need to contact. We could have any number of fields here that are relevant for sales and their follow-up, but I kept it very simple with email, first name, last name, and company. In addition, we're going to have a number of fields that are gonna tell the salesperson uh, where they're coming from in terms of what campaign they're coming from, what's the lead source. And again, we could have a lot of other fields that we need to track or to provide information to sales, but I kept it to just a few. Here, I have pulled in the salesperson contact field that is pre-populating from the uh, account manager list. And you'll see we have the field merge for account manager slash salesperson. So it will also pre-populate who the salesperson is here. I'm gonna jump on over to the processing steps and we'll take a look at what we have. So the first thing is gonna be update contacts with form data. This is going to include all of the fields that are on the form with the exception of campaign name because campaign name is not a contact field. So you see we have all of these same values and truly we don't really have to have all of these update. Email address is required so that Eloqua will recognize that the form submission uh, came on behalf of that contact. And then here we have lead source most recent, which is mapped to lead source most recent. We then have a second update contacts with form data, in which case we are really only mapping the lead source most recent to lead source original if the field is blank. So we want lead source original to be populated with the lead source most recent if it is blank. Um, here I'm also going to map the email address uh, and we will have that one set to always update uh, so that it knows which contact and is gonna save that field. As a best practice, I personally always have a shared list for all of my forms so that I always have a, uh, a compiled list of everyone that's ever come through this form. That is not required, but generally recommended. And here is where the magic happens. We are using a send notification email step 
Uh, here I have just a generic subject line of new lead from marketing. We could get creative with how we have this set up, but I kept it really basic. And what's really important is up here. We are going to use a pick list to select the email address that we are sending the notification to. And so here I have identified that we want to use the salesperson field to tell us who this is. So again, a reminder, the salesperson field is going to pass over the full name of the salesperson. And now I am going to choose that account lead with email address pick list. And so this is going to say where you find the option name, which is the full name, send it to the option value, which is the email address. And so here this we will dynamically have this um, trigger who this notification should go to. If by chance you don't use a salesperson field that actually has the salesperson's name coded, we could use a different field. We could have it by state, in which case we would have a pick list that has all of the states and the corresponding email address that it should be sent to by state. We could also use region or country or business unit or any field that exists on the contact can be set up as a pick list that has the corresponding value with the email address that it should be sent to. So now that we have our form, we can take a look at how does this thing actually work and push notifications over to the sales team. So for that, I'm going to jump into a campaign. So I'm going to go to orchestration and campaigns. Uh, I will save my form. And here I have this demand gen strategy campaign example where I have cloned one of our old campaigns just for this example. So here we have our workflow. They come in. There's a series of steps and decision rules and emails that are going out. And at this point, step 170, we will have a filter that asks, do they meet the lead criteria? In this filter, we could be looking at lead score if we're leveraging lead scoring. We could use a series of filters that look at both profile information as well as engagement. Whatever we'd like uh, to deem as a lead for this specific campaign, we can have that filter. If they don't meet the lead criteria, they can come on in the campaign workflow. But if they do, we have this form submit cloud app. So if I expand my campaign steps, just so that you can see what that looks like, this is a form submit step. Uh, and this is what I have in the workflow. This is one of the Oracle cloud apps that can be installed and leveraged for free. Uh, and so I will double click this. I have not uh, scheduled or I have not set this up already. So here I'm going to go to routing. If we want to route errors, so if someone is not able to pass through this, we can set up routing. If we only want to allow people to push through this form during certain times, we can do that. I'm not going to worry about either of those things for this tutorial. Instead, I'm going to hit the pencil so that we can configure this. And so here in the drop down, we are looking at those all of our Eloqua forms. So I'm just going to scroll down and find my example sales notification. And once I've done that, you'll see it pops up to give me all of the information. Um, so campaign name, uh, so here you can see it pre-populates email, first name, company, etc. With lead source, we want to actually set the lead source for this campaign. So if I scroll up, 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 I'm going to set this. Here we go to static value. And once I hit static value, uh, oh, whoops, I had select selected the campaign. Uh, once I hit static value, I can actually enter in the campaign name. So I'm just going to call this demand demand gen marketing. Uh, so let's say that's our campaign name. And then same thing here. I'm going to go up, up, up to the static value for our lead source most recent. And we may just have this as marketing. You can have all kinds of different values, whatever you use for lead source tracking, we would put in those static values. 
And so what will happen is when the contact passes through this step in the Canvas, it is going to submit the example sales notification form. It's going to push through the email address, first name, last name, company, and salesperson that we already have stored in Eloqua. And then it's going to write these static values. So if you remember when we get over to the form, it's going to set the actual value of lead source most recent as marketing. It's going to set the campaign name in demand gen. And all of this information is then going to be pushed based on the salesperson field as a notification email over to sales. And it's that simple. I'll hit save here. And once I save my campaign, we are all good to go. Um, and you can see I've got multiple places this is happening. So here after this email, if they meet the lead criteria, they can go there. Um, we can again have any number of fields in that form. We can use multiple form submit cloud apps um, if we need to pass different values at different stages of the campaign. But that's really all that's required to be able to send notifications to sales. Hopefully this was helpful. I am Brandy Starr, COO of Tegrita, and I appreciate you watching.